Pardon? Is there gluten-free wafers, or did you say, no, we made an announcement? We used to have gluten-free. I guess we'd have to check the, they're usually in a wrapper. Yeah. We welcome you to worship this evening, and we're honored to have Pastor Jill here to serve us with the Lord's table. We'll begin with the welcome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And if you stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and the new ones I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, 
our strength and our Redeemer. By your Spirit, hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We will continue with the first hymn, Blessed Are They, found in page 728. The first reading comes from Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, O coastlands, pay attention. You peoples from afar away, the Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He hid me, he made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. 
And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He said, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, and the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sothenius, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And speak Thanks be God. to God. Would you please stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. John 1, 29 through 42. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here he is, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is, this is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. And he brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated to Peter. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Coming up this week in Clintonville, there is a psychic fair. 
I don't know if you've seen posters hanging around, um, but there's a psychic fair that will be happening in Clintonville, and, and they'll have astrologers, and they'll have um, some palm readers, and they have um, people who, mediums who can uh, talk with the people that you love who are dead. And, and one of the pastors from Clintonville sent out an email with a picture of the poster, and the, the poster said, or the email said, maybe we should have put out a table, ha, 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 with funny faces. And my response to him was, maybe we should have gotten a table. You see, the people that are going to the psychic fairs are seekers. Just like people who come into our church, they are hungry for something. They're looking for something. And evidently, church hasn't done it for them. Whatever it is that they've been seeking, <coughs> excuse me, they have not found. We have not been able to show them the spirit of God in the world. So they're seeking alternative spirits. They're spiritual people who are lost. They're st spiritual people who are, want more than what they seem to find. Today, we hear about Jesus who is walking and passing John the Baptist, and John the Baptist had his own disciples, people who were following him. And he was paving the way for the coming of the Messiah, for the Christ. And he sees Jesus pass by, and he says, that is the one. That's the guy that you should go see. And he doesn't really give the, his disciples too much more besides saying that he had witnessed God's um, spirit hovering over Jesus and heard it exclaim that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah. And so the disciples decide to leave John in their search and seeking for the Messiah. And they start to follow Jesus. And Jesus notices them coming, and he turns around and he says, what are you looking for? That is a question that I wonder if we ask the people who enter our churches or the people we meet on the street. What is it that you're searching for? What is it that you're lacking? And how could that be filled up? And then Jesus says, after they say, Rabbi, where are you staying? What does he say? Come and see. A simple, warm invitation. He doesn't start to, you know, quote uh, the Old Testament or, you know, he doesn't ask for an altar call. He doesn't ask him to believe in him right away. He simply says, come and watch. Come and see what I'm doing. And then it's later in the evening and he invites them in an act of hospitality. He's, they're invited to stay with him. And my guess is as they are together, they're breaking bread together and they're having conversation. And the disciples are starting to feel like they found something really special with this guy. Something is filling them up. So much so that they go and bring other people. They go tell their friends something special is happening with this guy. Our hearts are on fire when he speaks to us. Come and see what we have found. And with this, this movement, this Jesus movement, movement begins to build. No pressure, simple invitation. Now we wonder why our churches aren't filled up. Well, I would say that sometimes evangelism that's been done hasn't been very warm. It hasn't been very hospitable. <clears throat> it hasn't really been inviting. Quite often we're told, if you don't call in the name of the Lord Christ, you're going to burn in hell. And so you better get it right, because you're going to die someday, and you, you, know, you don't want to be there. You want to go up there. But that's not the way Jesus did his, his evangelizing. He invited people in. He fed people. He touched people. 
He talked to them in the language that they were used to hearing. He acknowledged their pain, and he brought healing where he could. And all of that can happen in this place. Because I tell you, there are a lot of hurt people out in our world. A lot of people who want to know the love of God, wants to know that God will never leave them, has never left them, wants to know that God is calling them back home again. Come and see. I'm waiting for you. We just have to deliver the message for God. Come and see what we're doing. I was joking with my church. We have a rainbow banner outside of our church. We've taken it down because we did landscaping. But um, I have a woman who I was helping out in my uh, daughter's, granddaughter's um, class. And one of the teachers came by and she said, I really love your banner outside your church. And I got a little hokey, I have to admit. (laughs) And I said, well, if you like what's going on on the outside, come see what's going on inside. Well, that's a little hokey. (laughs) But I really meant it with all my heart. And this place is no different. This place that reaches out and does backpacks, talks about having their own community meal for people in the community someday, wants to reach out and touch people's lives, and they can come just as they are because God's waiting. See if you can go out this week and say to somebody, what is it that you're searching for? What is it that you need? Because I just might know the guy that can help. Come and see. Amen. We will continue with um, hymn 848, or 818. Oh, Master, let me walk with you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
And I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Heavenly Father, your servant John the Baptist witnessed your son, Jesus, to the disciples. We are tasked with the privilege to witness to our faith in the Messiah. Bless us in our faith journey as we tell the story. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creator God, the waters of baptism call us into life in the Spirit. As water symbolizes our life to you, help us to preserve the water resources of this world. We must avoid polluting our waterways and be more responsible in our uses. Help us to be protective stewards of this world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of peace, the stars of heaven shine brightest when the night is darkest. When fear attempts to engulf us, please guide us to look towards the light, the light of hope, peace, and understanding. God of mercy, receive our prayer. God of healing, help us to remember there are people less fortunate than ourselves. May you provide comfort for those with chronic pain, for anyone suffering the loss of a loved one. We ask for healing where possible and strength to endure whatever may come. Today, we especially pray for Al, Ann, Becky, Corinne, Dave, Dennis, Douglas, Evelyn, Fran, Gloria, Jaden, John, Joyce, Karen, Larry, Lee, Lois, Lynn, Nathan, Patty, Terry, Will, and the friends and family of Marvin Zeinert. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guiding Father, help us to see when others are in need. Help us not to pause, not to hesitate, but instead to be your hands and feet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving Father, we ask for your continued guidance and wisdom to our church leaders and our call committee as they seek a shepherd to partner with us in our ministry. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And then if you'll join me in the final petition. With everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness, we ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul-serving others' uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will now receive the offering. Did you put that back in there?
Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You, we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his disciples. He was throwing a feast, a feast of Passover, a time in which the uh, people remembered how God had intervened on their behalf all those many years ago. And the story was passed down from generation to generation. And Jesus, being the older son, would have sat at the table with his parents as a child and said, Father, why is this night like no other? And the stories would be told about how God had loved them and protected them, helped them to cross over to the promised land that God was with them in the bad times and through the tears. They were never alone. Emmanuel, God was with them. And as Jesus gathered with his disciples and the story was told, Jesus took bread, asked blessings upon it, broke it and passed it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of the bread, remember me. Likewise, as they lounged and they drank from the cups of blessings, four of them, he took one of the cups, raised it, and asked, blessings upon the cup, blessed are you, O God, for you give us wine to make our hearts happy. And he passed the cups to his disciples, and he said, take and drink, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for you for the remission of sin. As often as you drink of the blood, as often as you drink of the cup, remember me. And so we do at this time come together in a feast. A feast in which we believe that Christ is present with us, around us. All those we love bef who came before us are with us, all those yet to come, united in this feast of love. Come, before we come to the table, let us join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for God's people. There is gluten-free wafers available. There is also juice for those who wish to not have wine. This is a feast. This is a feast that is had by our Christ. Come and participate with joy, for Christ is with us. Loving God, we ask that you bless these gifts that you have given us, this bread, this cup. Help us to remember that you are our power and our glory. And everything we do, we do in your name. Amen. <coughs> did you want to do the cup? Or did you want to do the bread? Okay. This is Christ's body broken for you. Take and eat. Christ's body broken for you. Take and eat. Christ's body broken for you. Take and eat.
Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. Christ's Christ's body broken for you, take and eat. 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 Christ's body broken for you. Take and eat. I'll serve you. Christ's body broken for you. Take and eat. The cup of the covenant, our Lord Jesus Christ shed. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, precious God, for refreshing us at this table. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength, do justice, love, kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Few announcements. Um, the annual meeting is coming up um, in about a week and a half. And if you're typically a Wednesday night worshiper, you could still come to the meeting on Sunday morning, which would start approximately 1030. And the meetings of lately have been pretty efficiently run. So usually you're out of there in 45 minutes or so, and they serve you some nice snacks. So even if you don't like sitting through meetings, you can come and eat. Um, Communion will again be served on January, Sunday the 29th, which is the day of the annual meeting. And the food pantry needs for January hamburger helper and pasta. You can bring your things and deposit them in the shopping cart that's in the entryway. That's greatly appreciated. And if you haven't received your on offering envelopes yet, they are located in the great room. Um, and that would help. And Upcoming projects are to do some up refurbishing or uplifting of the parish hall. So if you have a few extra coins that you'd like to designate for that project, it would be greatly appreciated. We will now have our closing hymn, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve, 551.
and receive the blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strength, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.